the conference can be considered a success. I have some statistics here. Total registered 240 people. The important number is the next one. Students registered 49, which means a lot of young people are working on their water acoustics, which is very good for the future. Uh, we have 25 countries and so on and so on. Conference. And I wanted to give it uh, a ceremonial character. However, because of the coronavirus, we had to force, we have we were forced to make it online. So the 2023 20, conference will uh, be the ceremonial 10th conference. And what do I mean is we would have special events, scientific and social. Uh, you will get the information about the 2023 conference in uh, our website. Uh, Life Giorno had the idea of giving a word to students and we continue having this competition in life, in memory of life. Thank you very much. And uh, I hope we'll see you again in the next conference. On behalf of the evaluation committee, I was on the committee. I can tell you that there are very many good papers and the choice was a difficult one. Don't be discouraged. The award of best paper presented by a graduate student in memory of Life Giona, an originator of the series of conferences, goes to paper number 1467 by Ernst Jujanski, from the University of Haifa, Department of Marine Geosciences in Israel. The title of the paper is Estimating Seafloor Compressional Sound Speed in a Compacting Passive Margin Basin Using Standard Multi Channel Seismic Data. I'm sorry about that. Well, congratulations. Ernst, it was well deserved. Okay, I guess I should start. Welcome to the special session, structured session on uh, seafloor acoustics. Uh, our first talk is entitled uh, Estimating Seafloor Compressional Sound Speed in a Compacting Passive Margin Basin Settings Using Standard Multi Channel Seismic Data. And the talk will be given by Ernst. Jansky, I hope I got that right. And uh, please then go ahead and introduce your co-authors. Uh, co Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation and let's start. This picture represents example of uh, three-dimensional seismic data acquisition. There is a research vessel that carries several sets of air guns and also it carries several pretty long horizontal line arrays. And uh, seismic signals the travel times of seismic signals are usually used to study the velocity structure between source and the receiver. And in contrast, if we know information about ray travel times, and if we know information about the water structure, then we can estimate parameters of the bottom, we can estimate the velocity structure in the bottom. Let us consider the following uh, situation. There is research vessel that carries source with long array of hydrophones and sound speed in bottom 2 is higher than sound speed in bottom 1 and in the water, and sound speed in bottom 1 is higher than sound speed in water. Now, if we look at two-way travel time, or simply this is just the arrival time from the source to the receivers, versus offset, offset is just a distance between source to the receivers, then we can see a direct signal coming here, we can see seafloor reflections, red one, 
we can see some bottom reflection, the blue one, it's this one, and also because sound speed here is higher than there, sound speed here is higher than there and there, at some critical angle of incidence, the head wave will be formed, which will be continuously re-radiating energy back to the hydrophones, and they will form a straight line refractions. If we apply so-called reduced timing to the picture on the left, what it does, it just reshapes the two-way travel time a little bit so we can easily analyze it. Reduced time is travel time minus offset divided by the reduced velocity VR. The reduced velocity is some velocity that we pick, that we choose. In this case, in this example, we choose 1650 meters per second uh, reduced velocity. And why I'm telling you this is if this reduced velocity matches sound speed at the interface here, then this refraction will be reshaped into a horizontal straight line. And it makes estimation of bottom sound speed pretty easy. So in this case, this refraction is a straight line. It means that sound speed here is 1650 meters per second. So it's a uh, well-known methodology, but what happens if sound speed here in the bottom one is low? If it's, let's say, 1550 meters per second, or if it's 1600 meters per second, then critical angle will increase dramatically, and they, we will simply not see this refraction on the horizontal line array. In order to see it, we need to have 20 kilometers long antenna, which is nearly impossible. And uh, also, what happens if there is a gradient in the bottom? The sediment is compacting and sound speed may increase with bottom depth. So what happens in this situation? It's, this method will not work and this is the purpose of this presentation is to present methodology and results of estimation of uh, seafloor compressional sound speed along with sound speed gradient. And in our model we consider, we use geoacoustic inversion or matched field processing using three matching parameters. This is first parameter is sound speed at water sediment interface, V0. Second parameter is constant velocity gradient K. And third one is thickness of this sub-bottom layer H2. The experiment, we use da two data sets that were uh, carried out, the experiment was carried out in July 2000 and November 2001. It means that there is strong certification in the water. That's why we used uh, water velocity data using that was obtained in several cruises using CTD. And the length of the antenna is 7.2 kilometers. And these are the seismic lines that we use. And in this presentation, I will show you results for one point, it's 2290, off line 108, which starts here near the shore of Israel and goes to the depth of about 1300 meters per second. Also, we have chosen areas or more or less simple geology that in order to avoid biasing of the velocity estimations. So we picked areas where the bottom is as flat as possible with no significant spikes in the bathymetry. And also there is the same geological structure under the area of reflection of the shot. I will show you it on the next slide. So uh, this is uh, line 108. This is the shore. It goes to the, to the depth of about 1300 meters. Uh, 1300 meters. This is the research vessel. Carries horizontal line array 7.2 kilometers long. This is sea floor. And this is the top of the salt layer. So in our case, H2, the thickness of the layer is from here to here. So why we picked areas of simple geology? Because sound, in our case, reflects not from a single point. It reflects from some area because the array is pretty long. 
and let's say shot from this point will be reflected from this point and will arrive to the close hydrophones but the arrival to the far offset hydrophones will arrive from this point so and length of this area is half of the length of the antenna which is 3.6 kilometers so we can see that here the bottom is pretty flat the stratification is pretty constant there are no spikes in bathymetry so this data is good and this is example of the short gather so it's offset versus the reduced time reduced by two kilometers per second here is the direct signal coming here is the seafloor reflection coming here is refraction from the salt if i reduce again we can more easily see sub seafloor reflection which is simply reflection from this area and uh, this is this as we estimated it this refraction from the sub bottom this is a refraction from this layer if we assume that here is the velocity gradient in the in the bottom so we picked points from this data set we simulated models for different parameters and we compared them to see which uh, situation will give us the best match. Let's go further. So this is result of ray modeling. We have here the sound source. This is the seafloor. There is some stratification in water due to the uh, season, to seasonality. There is a increase in sound speed in the bottom due to constant velocity gradient k and we can see that different rays while propagating in the sub bottom they start to bend and they arrive at different times to the hydrophones not only times at different offsets different distances and we can see that some rays will arrive earlier some rays will arrive later and if we plot them if we plot all the rays we can see that uh, there is a direct arrival by the way the black dots represent the experimental data and the solid lines represent the model we can see that uh, there is a very nice agreement between the direct signal and seafloor reflection which means that we picked sound speed profile in water correctly and also there is a very good match between uh, experiment and model for sub bottom reflection and this v shaped refraction this is this v shaped refraction is generated by this bending rays and this is first method so we just model a lot of sound speeds a lot of gradients and a lot of thicknesses of the layer after some preliminary analysis of geological data and using uh, matched field processing we overlay them one onto another match them and compare them and the best match will give us the best uh, will give us the estimation of sound speed uh, and the gradient the second method is using caustics so uh, also the sound source this is the bottom and the rays are generated here at different angles of incidence and due to a uh, linear velocity gradient in the bottom they bend and they form caustics and in the caustics there will be prominent increase in intensity so in this method we use not only arrival times but also variability of intensity of the sound field that is recorded by the horizontal line array and this is once again the same reduced time as here and as here just with different uh, color scale in order to more easily see the increase in intensity and we can see that uh, seafloor reflection at, far, at um, short offsets has a very high intensity as it should be and also there is a prominent increase in uh, intensity here which we assume it may be due to caustic here is also a second 
increase in intensity, which we do not know yet what it can be. It can probably be a second caustics, and we have some theory that can explain that, or it can be due to more complex stratification in the sub-bottom. But now let's uh, focus on this part. So uh, if we know location of this caustic, if we know uh, depth of this caustic, in the, in the position of the caustic, if we know depth of the source, if we know range between them, and if we know velocity in the interface, we can estimate k, the velocity gradient. So uh, we decided to model the shot gather, the same shot gather represented here. We modeled wide band pulse from 10 to 90 hertz, wide band signal, and uh, we here take a look at the arrival times. It's hard to distinguish anything here, so we also apply the time reduction. And we compare the model and the experiment. This is simple race. This is the synthetic shot gather after reduced time by 2 kilometers per second. And this is the experimental data. We can see here the seafloor reflection, sub seafloor reflection. Here's a part of the direct signal. And we can see a prominent V shape refraction with a prominent increase in intensity. It really now depends where we assume is the start of this uh, refraction. If we assume that refraction starts here at low intensity, then there is a perfect match and um, gradient is 0 0.7. But if we assume that the, this refraction starts here, then, uh, intensity, then the gradient should be a little bit more. And if we model not 0 0.7, if we model 0 0.8, now we see that uh, maybe it's also a little bit higher than it should be. And using this methodology, we can estimate gradient to be about 0 0.75. We estimated 24 shots. We, these shots were composed of 12 adjacently located pairs. So it's one shot next to another, about 100 meters one from another. Uh, to see the, if there is consistency of the results. And seafloor velocity is normally distributed from 1500 to 1600 meters per second. Average velocity is 1550 meters per second and velocity is predominantly 0 0.8. Also, neither seafloor velocity nor depth of the salt layer H2 seem to correlate with the velocity gradient. And this is good because it helps us to verify that there is no interdependence in our estimation of different parameters. This picture represents the special distribution of the data. This is for sound speed in the interface and this is for velocity gradient k. And we can see first is that the, sounds, the seafloor sound speed and uh, to a lesser extent the velocity gradient k seem to increase with water depth. And this may be associated with presumed decreasing sedimentation rates and increasing clay content away from the margin. So it's interesting that here sound speed is lower, but it tends to increase with depth. And also here the gradient tends to increase with depth. So to sum up, we estimated V0. It is normally distributed from 1500 to 1600 and average is 1550. So I think it's pretty cool that we succeeded to estimate such low sound speed in the interface. The velocity gradient is predominantly 0 0.8. They tend to increase with water depth. And special distribution demonstrates the consistency of the parameters. And the method proposed, proposed allows estimating sound speed at water sediment interface when it is very close to sound speed in water, along with the velocity gradient. So it provides the velocity structure of the whole bottom layer. So thank you very much for your attention. If you have any results, results. <laughs> if you have any questions, please ask your questions. And also you can ask questions by email. It's ernestuzhansky at gmail.com.
www.ghostbusiness.com. If you have any questions, please contact me. I will be pleased to provide you some details and we can discuss the results. Because in our opinion, they are pretty wonderful. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ernst. That was a very interesting talk. And uh, while we're waiting for questions, I have a question for you. You said you, uh, uh, you need to unmute yourself too, just in case. Uh, yes, I'm listening. <laughs> yes, um, uh, you looked at the uh, that the, uh, the that the uh, gradient, and you you saw that there was some variation of the gradient with uh, water depth. But have you looked at the variation of the gradient with the thickness of the uh, salt uh, mud layer? Uh, yes, we we did, and we didn't see. If I can. If you if you want, I can also send you the the picture we we made it. Uh, there is no strong intercorrelation of thickness with gradient, and yeah. So we looked we looked at that. We didn't see intercorrelation. Okay, I was curious because because you know the the top of the mud will have a certain uh, speed, very close to the speed of sound and water, but. The, and the bottom should have a higher speed, you know, it's perhaps close to the uh, to the uh, substrate layer, uh, sound speed. So, so the depth of that mud changes. Perhaps I thought maybe the, the gradient might have something to do with it too. You mean the the total gradient, which depends on the thickness of the whole layer? Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's uh, now what we are trying to do, we have uh, sampled some cores in the area where we're working and we want to estimate the water content uh, in the core because like uh, there is uh, silty clays and they're lying above a uh, salt layer which is like uh, it's four kilometers per second so there is a very prominent increase in sound speed so we want to model it and to see like uh, if it will match, if the water content will match the water content from the course. Mm, so it's okay. can, it can partially also answer your question, but we need to look in more details on that. Yes, and um, one, one other small question. You assume that the linear gradient, if the gradient was, was not linear, would you be able to tell the difference? Uh, this is also thing that we're planning to model as a next step. There are some models that suggest that it can have a, like a hyperbolic form, this gradient, and can have other forms. So right now we consider just linear velocity gradient and we did not model it for other shapes of the gradient. Okay. So uh, probably, okay. but I can't say for sure. We need All to right. look at it. I think we have to move on to the next paper. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and uh, I hope we'll see you again in the next conference.